Right, so good afternoon everybody and a very big welcome to Pension Matters Live and Local. I'm Claire Whiteleg and um, I head up the investments uh, team at the Financial Services Authority, but this isn't really a Financial Services Authority event, this is a Pension Matters event and Pension Matters is a collaboration between ourselves at the Authority and the Personal Finance Society. That's a professional body in the UK. They do qualifications for financial advisors and um, try and make sure that financial advisors are behaving ethically, etc. So we're working together on this campaign. The campaign isn't a regulatory initiative. It's very much about providing information to consumers so that consumers have the information they need to make informed choices. Now, I was thinking about all of this um, earlier today as to why are we doing this, and it actually brought to mind a little anecdote about my grandpa. Uh, my grandpa was a bus engineer in Leeds, and I can remember hearing him say when he retired, he was better off than he'd ever been because he had his final salary pension from the bus company, and he had the state pension on top, and the state pension more than made up the difference between his salary and um, and what he was earning. So he was actually a better off in retirement. I can't think of anybody, myself included, who is going to be better off when they retire. And there's very, a lot of reasons for that, and people will be talking about that tonight. But what, the one thing that's certain is that people need to take responsibility for their own future. It's not about having a pot of money. It's about having the ability to live the life you want to live when you're retired. Um, and if you think about what you earn at the moment, and then you think about how much the state pension is, and then you think about living on that, actually, people really need to think about it carefully and say, what's the difference? Either I have to cut back on my lifestyle, or I have to make some provisions so that I've got some funds there to look after me and my family. So, pensions is a big subject. I have to say, before we started the campaign, I probably knew less about pensions than I thought I did. I thought I knew it all, and I work in the financial services industry, and I regulate the financial advisors, and I thought I knew it all. Since December, when we started working on this campaign, I've realised how little I know. It's a very complex subject, and I'm a so-called professional. Because it's complex, everybody needs information. What we're not doing today is telling you what you should do. What we're trying to do is give people information to help you decide what you should do. It's not about me telling you how you should live your life or any of the guys who are going to be coming up and talking. It's about enabling you to do what you want to do. So if you want to go skydiving when you're 76, can you actually afford to do that and can you do that in a way that you want to? If you want to sit at home and do the gardening, that's fine. This is about enabling people to make their own lifestyle choices. The one thing that we can say is, though, if you put a little aside, the earlier you start, the less painful it is. Um, we'll come to a question later when we get to the question and answers, but the one thing I wish I'd known when I was 18, 19, 20, 21, 35, 36, 37, is how much or how little I was actually saving. I've quite happy to go out and have a nice time, but actually, if you think about some small changes I could have made to my lifestyle back then, that would have made a big difference to my future when I retire, without actually taking away any of the fun. And so, one of the things I'm passionate, and I have to say absolutely passionate, is trying to get the message across to my children, or my child, I only have one, but also other people's children, about making those small changes when they're younger, because people are living longer. Unfortunately, or should I say fortunately, fortunately from a life point of view, people are living longer. And that stat actually frightens me. Did you know that 24% of 65-year-old women and 17% of 65-year-old men will live until they're 100? Okay, you retire at 65, for example. That is 35 years without a salary. 35 years living off the state pension unless you have other assets, other savings that you can draw on to make your life more comfortable. And the state pension isn't there to make your life brilliantly comfortable, it's there just to cover any shortfall and to stop people falling into poverty. 
if you're not living in poverty at the moment, do you want to live in poverty when you're older? And that's the sort of message that I'm very keen that we get across to the young people because um, they're the people who will be paying our pensions and uh, it's, whether they'll have a state pension or not in the future, they need to take a lot of personal responsibility now. The other thing, uh, which is, we're not co covering too much tonight, although we are going to be joined by Pauline Woods from the Office of Fair Trading. Remember, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. In the UK, there has been a huge amount of pension fraud. What do I mean by that? Pension freedoms was introduced in the UK, and a lot of people liberated their pensions. So they could spend it and then invested it in schemes that were promising 20, 25% per annum growth, whatever it might be, a lot better than the bank. A lot of those people have lost all of their pension, and that's a really scary prospect. So what the other side of it is, once you know what you've got to spend, what you invested in is gonna be really important for your future as well, because do you want to go after the high-risk investments that'll give you a lot of promise but the downside is potentially losing everything, or do you go for something safer or something in between the two? Now, I'm not a financial advisor, and so in looking at those sorts of questions, where I'd go would be to talk to a financial advisor, somebody who actually knows what they're doing and how it all fits together. And I think that's something, again, that I would strongly recommend, but it's for everybody to make their own choice. But again, pensions are complicated. There's a lot of legislation, there's a lot of different things on offer and people need to know what they want to do with their future. What will you do to sort out your future and your pension? When it comes to retirement, you will need to cover the basics. You will need food, there will be bills, you'll need clothes. Most of us want some independence and flexibility. We might still want to have a car or have the ability to get cabs or whatever it is, some savings, home improvements. And I think most people would like a little bit of a life's luxuries as well. So if you want to be at the bottom of the list and not just on the basics, I'd set you the task of this. Decide what you want from your retirement, but be realistic. How are you gonna fund it? It's never too early or too late to start, but the earlier the better. And plan now so then you can reap the rewards when you retire. Every little bit helps. Thank you very much, everybody.